The Taliban is basically won and is basically flaunting it. So the Taliban is taking, well, took control of presidential palace and poses for pictures inside. So let's get right into the story. So the Taliban took control of the presidential palace in Kabul on Sunday, brazenly posing for pictures inside vacated Afghan government offices and meeting rooms. The images show heavily armed fighters from the extremist Islamic group standing around one Taliban leader as he sits at the desk of departed President Ashraf Ghani, who fled the capital city, according to reports. Another photo shows more than a dozen rebels sitting at a long conference table inside the Afghan government building, Al Jazeera reported. So the group announced from the palace that they will reestablish the Islamic emirate that was disbanded after U.S. forces invaded in 2001. Oh, this is going to get really bad. So the Taliban moved into Kabul on Sunday after a lightning-fast military op operation allowed the insurgents to capture most of Afghanistan over the past week and entered into talks with government officials at the presidential palace, the Associated Press reported. The development marked the latest in the ongoing chaos in Kabul. American helicopters evacuated staff from the U.S. Embassy and the international airport where U.S. diplomats and hundreds of Afghans had sought shelter came under fire and people in panic over fears that the Taliban would return to their oppressive rule flooded the streets. <sighs> this is going to get really bad. So the airport is out of control. The Afghan government just sold us out. An official at the airport told Reuters. Earlier Sunday, Taliban insurgents said they would not attack the city until the transfer of power was worked out. Okay, do you, like, just think about this statement, right? They would not not attack the city until the transfer of power was worked out. So they're going to attack the city regardless, right? And that's so scary. So Taliban fighters are to be on standby on all entrances of Kabul until a peaceful and satisfactory transfer of power is agreed. Taliban spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid. The Taliban proclaimed an Islamic emirate when they assumed power in Afghanistan in 1996 and instituted a strict version of Sharia law that banned women from working or studying and prohibited Western books and movies. The insurgency, which drew from the Mujahideen, who fought against the Soviet Union in the 1980s, was toppled by the U.S. for harboring al-Qaeda terrorists while they developed their plan to attack the U.S. on 9-11. So uh, this is going to get like really bad. And I just wanted to comment on this because this is the problem when you end up going and doing something in a different country and you don't finish whatever it is that you're actually going to do before you leave. Because this is the problem, right? And of course, no one wants war all the time. But at the same time, you have to think about it. There's always going to be consequences to every action. And this was basically well known that this exact event basically will end up happening if you take out troops, right? So, of course, you know, people have different opinions as to what should happen, what's the best route to happen, all that kind of stuff, right? The only thing is, anytime you don't actually go and finish the job fully, guess what? There's always going to be leaks right it's kind of like a plumber who goes to a job and does some plumbing and leaves when like basically the job is like 90 to 99 percent done right so even though he technically did a job there's still a high chance of there being leakage right meaning there could be some pipes that he made or pvc pipes that he worked on that could just have not been sealed correctly. So there's going to be continuous leaks. And those leaks are going to cause mold. And that mold is going to potentially cause harm to the people who own the property that the job was actually being done on. So this is the only thing. Like this is the only like comment that I really wanted to make. To try to turn this into like 
somewhat of a financial spin that like hey guess what like when you don't finish a job that you were sent there to do things like this can happen right and it's going to get really dark really quick throughout this whole process and then also if you want to wear like a tinfoil hat some people might think that the united states purposely left without finishing the job so that they could resend troops at like full scale to go and do stuff like this to basically keep funding the whole military industrial complex and all that kind of stuff right so it's something to really think about you know you never really know what might actually happen but either way whenever you go and do a job do your best to finish the job otherwise even if there's like a one percent like out of the hundred percent that you know is not done that one percent will end up turning into a big problem just given enough time and it wasn't even that long of a time for this like one percent like non-completion of the job to end up turning into a pretty darn big issue like i mean this is a really big issue all because the job was not completed so i don't know feel free to contact us at 40 inboxcom as to what your thoughts are about this whole situation the way that we think of is that this is going to potentially be going like really really bad this could have a lot of implications for all the people that are working in that area that are living in that area these can have a lot of financial implications on the united states and anywhere else like there's a lot of different effects of what's going to happen depending on what actually happens and who knows if there's going to be a war over this right like who knows what's going to end up happening from this like it's going to get crazy right to put it simply this is going to get absolutely nuts and I would not be surprised if some like massive military operation ends up happening to where they're trying to like you know solve this issue, like basically try to put another band-aid over this issue when their original band-aid wasn't even a hundred percent on, right? So it's gonna get interesting, it's gonna get bad. This is not a good thing, one way or another, depending on however you look at it. Like none of this is good, right? None of this is good for basically anyone except for people who potentially want war, right? So if you are like a company or a person that, you know, make most of their money through war, you're probably going to like something like this because you're probably going to make a lot of money. But at the same time, this whole situation as a whole is pretty bad, right? Like you, you don't want to really get in. It's just bad, okay? No matter which way you, like, anyone might try to spin this, whether it be left, right, center, all that kind of stuff, this is bad. There's going to be a lot of consequences to this, and it's going to be very interesting to see what actually ends up happening in the effects of everything. Because, again, a lot of people don't think about this, but what are the effects that are going to happen from these actions? And it's going to be interesting like people thought 2020 was bad 2021 is probably going to be way worse if this escalates in any realm by the way if you need help with mastering your money on a more lighter note go check out 40 inboxcom to learn the secret to mastering your money because at least try to have some control over your own life because there's going to be a lot of people who see this and not have really any control as to what's going to happen in this whole situation.